Hey everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel. It's back. It is back. College football is back for the 2021 season. And so am I making my picks. Last season was so screwed up because of COVID-19 and teams playing, teams not playing, conferences playing, conferences not playing. I was stressed out because of everything going on with COVID-19, so I did not do any week-by-week -week pick videos, and I am super excited to get back into doing just that. Last week was week zero, technically, of the college football season with a couple of matchups. Nothing spectacular, new, no top 25 matchups. This week, though, tonight, in fact, in just a couple of hours, begins some of the top 25 matchups for the 2021 college football season. So without further ado, let's dive into those matchups and make some picks. There are 20 total picks for this week. There are five matchups between top 25 teams. As always, I am not dealing with point spreads. I am just picking straight winners and losers. I don't deal with point spreads. I don't really understand the language of betting. I know what a point spread is, but I don't really understand pluses, minuses, getting, getting, pushes. I don't understand any of that terminology. So I just do straight winners and losers. So we're going to do 20 games this week, beginning with the AP number one, Alabama. The Crimson Tide are starting off this season in a neutral site game against number 14 ranked Miami of Florida out of the ACC. Alabama's lost a lot going into this season. Mac Jones, their quarterback who helped win a national championship last year, he's gone. He's in New England now in the NFL. One of their stud receivers, Devontae Smith, who helped them win a national championship last year, he's gone. He's in the NFL. Najee Harris, their stud running back who helped them win a national championship last year, he's gone. He's in the NFL. If you look at the run that Alabama's been on, They've had, these are quite literally their last three quarterbacks. Jalen Hurts, now gone to the NFL. Tua Tungavailoa, won a national championship, now gone to the NFL. Mac Jones, won a national championship, now gone to the NFL. Bryce Young now steps into that tradition. Can Bryce Young be the next big stud quarterback who can take Alabama to the mountaintop? Can they do it with a fourth consecutive quarterback? Can Robert Mitchie step up and be the next stud running back or the next stud wide receiver in a series that includes recently Henry Ruggs, who's in the NFL, Jerry Judy, who's in the NFL, and Devontae Smith, who's in the NFL? How long can Alabama keep doing this before there might be some drop off? We have yet to see. Normally, that uncertainty and going up against a ranked team, a good team in the Miami Hurricanes, their head coach, Manny Diaz, who initially cut his teeth as a defensive coordinator, he's the one who invented the turnover chain concept that has been copied across college football. He's now focusing a lot more on the defense. He's still the head coach, obviously, but he's paying more attention to the defense on this, so everybody expect, expects them to be a lot better on that front. They're an experienced team. They've got an experienced quarterback in Derek King, the kid who transferred over from Houston. I was leaning towards Miami for a hot minute on this. But Derek King is coming off of a serious knee injury that he suffered in their bowl game last year against Oklahoma State. And it's only been about nine months since he suffered that injury. I'm a bit nervous about how mentally ready he's going to be for this. I'm a little bit nervous about how physically ready he's going to be for this. And despite the inexperience with some of the new starters on Alabama's offense, I guess I'm going on this. I'm going on what I think is a safe bet this time and not betting against Nick Saban to be ready for a non-conference opening matchup in the beginning of the season. So I'm going with Alabama on this one. I have to admit, I am a little bit nervous because of that lack of experience on the offensive side with some of their main starters and some of the experience that Miami has and how a lot of people are high on Miami for this season, thinking that they maybe could challenge Clemson for an ACC championship. But I think I'm making the safe bet by going with the Crimson Tide. Number two, Oklahoma. They're taking on Tulane. They've got a more experienced quarterback. Spencer Rattler is in his second year as the starter. Go with Oklahoma. 
The biggest matchup of opening weekend is number three, the Clemson Tigers, taking on number five, the Georgia Bulldogs. Clemson has also lost a lot on the offensive side. Their quarterback, Trevor Lawrence, he's gone. He's in the NFL at Jacksonville now. Their starting running back, Travis Etienne, he's gone. He's also in Jacksonville. DJ Uilungalale, the five-star coming out of high school, who got a couple of starts last year when Trevor Lawrence was out because of COVID protocols. He is now slotting into the starting position. As far as running back goes, though, they seem to be doing things by committee. The research I was able to do, nobody knows who their starting quarter, uh, starting running back is. They haven't named one yet. They're playing it very close to the chest. They might go with a running back by committee. Maybe they're just waiting until game time to name an official starter. But if that's the case, then that may indicate that none of their running backs have really stepped up to shine above any of the others throughout summer camps and throughout summer practices. So Travis Etienne is a big, big loss. He accounted for a ridiculous percentage of Clemson's offense the last few years. They're going up against a Georgia team that is experienced. They've got a a solid starting quarterback now in JT Daniels, the transfer from USC. Last year, Georgia went through some ups and downs with their quarterback situation because Daniels was still injured, and it took him a bit of an unusual amount of time to get back in action, but once he did, Georgia's offense started getting better, they started getting the ball rolling, no pun intended, and they started moving. People are high, from what I understand, on Georgia's defense this year. Because of the inexperience at quarterback, despite Uilunga Lale's couple of starts last year, this is the first game where they're not going to have Travis Etienne, this is the first game of a new season where Ui Lungalale is the man. He knows he's going in as the starter. That creates a different mentality than him going in as a backup. I'm going to give the edge to Georgia on this one. I'm going to call a bit of an upset here. Number five, Georgia. I think they get one over three, Clemson. I think Clemson's going to be very good this year. I think Clemson's going to win the ACC this year. But I think with the first game of the season, with the uncertainty at running back, with the lack of experience at quarterback, compared to what George has got. Give me the Bulldogs in this one. Number four, Ohio State on the road tonight at Minnesota. Ohio State's also breaking a new quarterback. Justin Fields is gone. He's in Chicago with the Bears. They've got C.J. Stroud is now their new quarterback. He's a freshman who's starting in at quarterback at the Ohio State University. So that's a bit of an unusual situation for a a freshman to be starting at Ohio State, not because of injuries to other quarterbacks on the roster. So Ohio State is also going through some changes on offense. They've also lost a couple of wide receivers. They've also lost, I think, a running back to the draft. But they're going up against Minnesota tonight. Minnesota is a shell of the team that it was a couple of years ago when they went 10-2 and and won a big New Year's Day game. So go with Ohio State. Number six, Texas A&M. They're taking on Kent State. The Kellen Mond era is over. I don't know who their new quarterback is, but in this game it's not going to matter. So go with Texas A&M. Number seven, Iowa State. A lot of people are high on Iowa State this year. Coach Matt Campbell is returning starting quarterback Brock Purdy. They've got a lot of depth and they've got a lot of experience, both on offense and defense. Many people are thinking that this might be the year that the Cyclones can finally overcome the barriers that are the Texas Longhorns and the Oklahoma Sooners and win themselves a Big 12 championship and maybe crash the party for the college football playoff. They're taking on Northern Iowa. I'm going with Iowa State on this one, but Northern Iowa has proven tricky for both Iowa State and Iowa in the last few years. Taking games into the fourth quarter, taking games into overtime. I'm going with Iowa State. Look for this game to possibly be close in the first half before Iowa State finally gets its act together, shakes off the rust, and pulls away in the second half. 
Number eight, the Cincinnati Bearcats out of the American Athletic Conference taking on Miami of Ohio. I don't really know anything about Miami of Ohio. I know that Cincinnati has a lot to prove this year under head coach Luke Fickle. Last year, because the Big Ten didn't play right away, because the Pac-12 didn't play right away, they benefited by getting an elevated ranking, which they never let go of, because they just kept winning despite the fact that they normally get penalized for being in the American Athletic Conference because it's deemed lesser than because it's a group of five conference, not one of the Power Five conferences. So the fact that they're starting ranked number eight means that they have a shot where they can get another New Year's Day six game. They got one last year against Georgia that they led for the vast majority until right near the end. Or... If a couple of breaks fall their way, they could possibly challenge for a college football playoff spot. I don't necessarily see that happening. I don't see the powers that be necessarily letting them do that. But I think in this opening game, I think they start out strong. Go with Cincinnati. Number nine, Notre Dame. They've got a new quarterback in Jack Cohn, the transfer from Wisconsin. The Ian Book era is done. They're starting out this season at Florida State. Florida State's got a new quarterback. They've got Mackenzie Milton, who hasn't played a game since November 23rd of 2018 when he was with Central Florida kicking ass and taking names, but he got a serious knee injury in that game. In the regular season finale against South Florida, ended up needing, I think, five surgeries on that knee. His backup, Dylan Gabriel, take took over and just ran with it and is now the starter at Central Florida. So, Mackenzie Milton has transferred to Florida State. I'm going with Notre Dame in this one, even though I don't know a whole lot about the rest of Notre Dame's team, simply because Florida State's a dumpster fire. It just is. Florida State is an absolute mess, so go with Notre Dame. Number 11, Oregon. They've got a new quarterback, a kid named Anthony Brown Jr., who's had a reconstructive knee surgery already in each knee, so we'll see what happens with that. Their quarterback from last year, Tyler Shuck, he left. He's at Texas Tech now. They're going up against Fresno State. Despite the quarterback situation, I trust their head coach, Mario Cristobal. He plays gritty, tough football. He's an old offensive lineman, so he wants to be tough, and he wants to have strong guys up front in the front seven on on the defensive side of the ball and in the front five on the offensive line. Fresno State has proven a problem for a couple of Pac-12 teams in recent years, including UCLA, I think, either last year or the year before. But I think this one, it's at Eugene, so go with the Ducks. Number 12, Wisconsin in the Big Ten. They're starting off against number 19, Penn State. It is at Camp Randall in Madison, Wisconsin. I don't know much about Penn State. I know that last year they were an absolute dumpster fire, a disaster of a season. But the problem with using last year to analyze Big Ten teams is that you're only going to get about six games for each team. Wisconsin, you only got to think four because they kept having games canceled because of COVID. So I don't really know much about Wisconsin or Penn State. I don't really know why people are so high on Penn State that they're ranked 19th. I, they, maybe they had a good recruiting class, but last year they were just... Wisconsin, Graham Mertz is now the man at quarterback. We'll see if they can find a stud running back like they normally have behind a big offensive line, powerful tight ends. I'm going with Wisconsin on this one just because I don't trust Penn State coach James Franklin and what they have going on based on what little evidence there is last year. And it's at Wisconsin. So I'm going to go with the Badgers on this one. Number 13, Florida. They've lost a lot as well. Their quarterback, Kyle Trask, he's gone. Their stud tight end, Kyle Pitts, he's gone into the NFL. Their stud wide receiver, he's gone into the NFL. They're taking on Florida Atlantic. Florida Atlantic no longer has uh, Lane Kiffin as head coach. He's off at Ole Miss in the SEC. So I'm going to go with the Florida Gators. It's in the swamp in uh, Gainesville. So go with Florida on this one. I've already called Miami to lose to Alabama. Number 15, USC. Keaton Slovis is back in action as a starting quarterback there. They're taking on San Jose State University, who surprisingly won the Mountain West Conference last year. I think USC 
has a lot to prove this season, and I think there's a bit of a chip on their shoulders. They were 5-0 and last season. They went to their conference championship game. They were supposed to play Washington, who won the Pac-12 North, but Washington got hit with a COVID outbreak, so Oregon at 3-2 and gets slotted in, goes on to beat USC, win the Pac-12. I think USC comes in a bit angry, and I think their head coach is feeling some pressure for not winning that conference, for not having a conference championship game already. He's been there for a couple of years. The USC faithful and donors, they want a winner. They want them to challenge for conference championships. They want them to challenge for national championships. I think USC is going to have a good year this year, and I think they start out with a win against the Mountain West defending champs in San Jose State. Number 16, uh, LSU, the Tigers, coming off a season where they had some struggles trying to find a quarterback. They eventually found one in Max Johnson. They're taking on UCLA. They're at UCLA. This one's interesting because UCLA played last week in Week 0. They played against Hawaii, who was clearly overmatched. UCLA had a big running attack. They rushed for almost 250 yards in that game and a couple of touchdowns. They've got Zach Charbonneau, the transfer from Michigan. They've also got another running back who got into the action. Their quarterback, Dorian Thompson-Robinson, DTR, though, had a real pedestrian game. Low completion percentage, only had 100-some yards in the game. They're going to need him to step up and be much better. People seem to seem to be pretty high on DTR and have been for a season or two. I just don't get it. It's the same phenomenon with Kellen Mond. I never understood the love for Kellen Mond at Texas A&M. I never thought he was as good as everybody said they were. Uh, he was. Same thing with DTR. A lot of people think DTR is is good. He's got all the tools. He could be possibly a first round draft pick if he plays well. And I kind of look at it and go. Not seeing it. LSU has had a bit of an issue because of Hurricane Ida. They had to leave Baton Rouge and they had to go to Houston for a day or two before they then traveled on to Pasadena to play in the Rose Bowl. I think the combination of the upset schedule because of Hurricane Ida along with the experience that UCLA got last week by actually playing a game. They've got film to analyze. They know what they've got to work out. LSU isn't quite sure of what they're getting. A lot of people are high on LSU. I'm calling an upset on this one. I think LSU goes into UCLA and they get bounced. I'm not calling an upset by a dramatic margin. I think the game's close. I think it's competitive. But I think the experience advantage and I think the uncertainty over, I think the upsetting of the schedule for LSU gives them something else to think about because what's home campus like? Are they going to be able to go to class? Are there problems with buildings? Are there problems with their practice facilities? Are they going to have to just stay in Houston? I think in the back of the minds of the coaches and the kids, the players, I think those questions are going to be enough of a distraction that UCLA is going to pop them. So... Go with UCLA over number 16, LSU. Number 17, Indiana. We move back into the Big Ten. They're playing number 18, Iowa. Last season, Indiana had a bit of a breakout season. They beat Penn State early on at the last minute. They held strong against Ohio State, and that was a barn burner of a game. Again, small sample size, and wondering if that was just a a lightning-in-a-bottle season or if this is maybe a mark of some sustained success that Indiana can possibly have. I think that's probably why people have rated them down at number 17 as opposed to putting them higher up in the top 25. Maybe some people don't trust that success that they had last season. I'm not sure if I trust that success that they had last season. The game is at Iowa. It's at Kinnick Stadium. Kinnick Stadium is always a tough place to play. I don't really know much about Iowa. Some people are thinking that this is going to be a bounce back season for them this year. That's about all the news I've been able to hear about them. I don't really know much about Indiana either, but I don't fully trust the success that they had last year. I think they got out of some games like that Penn State game with a bit of a benefit of the doubt on some calls. So I'm going with Iowa in this one. I'm going with 18 Iowa over number 17 Indiana. 
Number 19, Penn State. I've already called them losing to number 12, Wisconsin. Number 20, Washington. They're facing Montana at home. Washington's also an interesting one. Last year was the head coaching debut of Jimmy Lake, spoiled by COVID concerns for in a number of respects. So this year, he's got a full season under his belt. He's had a full array of practices and off-season workouts under his belt. So we're really going to get to see what Jimmy Lake can do at the University of Washington. He's a defensive guy. He was the co-defensive coordinator uh, two years ago. I think Washington also has a chip on their shoulder. They're an experienced team. They've got uh, some strength on the offensive and defensive lines. Their defense has some strong pieces in the back seven. As I mentioned earlier, they were supposed to go to the Pac-12 title game last year, but a COVID outbreak nullified that. They had won the Pac-12 North. I think they're looking to repeat and I think they're going to be motivated because external forces caused them to not compete for a championship that then went to their in-division rival, Oregon. I think they're going to be really motivated this year. And again, they're playing Montana, so go with the Huskies. Number 21, Texas, taking on number 23, Louisiana Lafayette. This is a fascinating matchup because from what I understand, Louisiana Lafayette has some experience coming back this year. They had a good year last year. They upset a couple of, uh, I think, one or two um, Power 5 teams. I think they were the ones that beat Kansas State at the beginning of the year. Texas, meanwhile, this is the coaching debut of Steve Sarkeesian. The Tom Herman experiment is now done. He's coming in. Sam Ellinger is gone. He's in the NFL. He's with the Indianapolis Colts now. So they've got two quarterbacks that are going to play in this game. Hudson Card is going to get the start, but Casey Thompson will get some playing time. Neither of them has started a game in college. That makes me a bit nervous. There's a lot of talk about B. John Robinson, the running back, though, about how he could be the best running back in the nation behind a good offensive line. I think the game is at Texas. I would assume that Texas' offensive and defensive lines are just bigger and more physical than what the Raging Cajuns from Louisiana are going to bring to the table. I think Texas relies a lot on Bijan Robinson. I'm really nervous about the quarterback situation, but I'm going to go with the Longhorns on this one. Give me Texas in this game. Number 22, Coastal Carolina, the Chanticleers, the most fearsome of the barnyard animals, apparently, taking on the Citadel. Coastal Carolina was also highly rated last year. They kind of crashed the top 15 party. They had a a barn burner of a game against BYU that they kind of haphazardly scheduled to give each team an extra data point to see if Cincinnati dropped off, maybe they would get a New Year's Day 6 game. They're coming back. I don't know too much about them. I don't know too much about the Citadel other than you normally see the Citadel as one of those kind of punching bag teams for the Power 5 guys. I'm going with Coastal Carolina on this one. Number 24, Utah. They're home against Weber State. Go with Utah on this one. And then finally, we've got number 25, Arizona State. The Fighting Herm Edwards taking on Southern Utah University. Arizona State's got some distractions because they have some NCAA investigations going on because they were bringing people onto campus when they weren't legally allowed to do that because of COVID concerns and COVID mitigations. And the term lack of institutional control is being thrown around in the rumor mill. That's serious. That's not good. But because of their opponent, because that game, let me check, is home, it's at Arizona State, go with Coach Edwards and go with the Sun Devils. So that's the 20 picks. That's the top 25 for this week. We'll see how I do at the end of it all. I'm a bit nervous about a couple of picks. I'm pretty confident about some others. Please do me a favor if you like this video and you'd like to get notified about more college football videos that I'm going to release as the weeks progress, as well as other videos I've got on my channel like my Robert's Rules series and more history videos that I will be doing hopefully sometime in the near future. Please do me a favor and like the video, subscribe to my channel, and turn on the notifications so every time a new video gets up, you will get alerted that there is one and you can watch and enjoy. 
Thanks everyone for watching. Best of luck watching college football this week, and I will see you all next time.